Well, of course, these are the extraordinary scenes. Just to update you, if you're just joining us on BBC One and News 24, um, both World Trade Center towers in Manhattan have been hit by passenger planes in an apparent terrorist incident. The Pentagon, the seat of American military power in Washington, D.C., also appears to have been hit by a passenger plane. At this stage, we believe that all three passenger planes were hijacked from Boston, flew down the eastern seaboard before hitting their targets. In the last 10 minutes, approximately one hour after being hit by a plane, one of the towers of the World Trade Center has uh, collapsed. Uh, of course, 50,000 people worked in these towers. Let's get some more eyewitness reports now. The doorman goes to me, oh, wow, I've never seen a plane flying so low. And we, we looked out at it, and all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And he, we came running over here closer to the place, and all of a sudden, we saw the other explosion. I don't know, I don't know. You know, that's all I saw. I saw a couple of people jumping out of the other building. I seen two or three people jump out of the building. The first one, the, I don't know if that's number one tower or number two tower. It's unreal. Scenes of people fleeing in panic, as you'd expect in Manhattan. Um, scenes of panic on the streets of Manhattan, of course, after um, two planes hit the World Trade Center towers. One of the towers, of course, has collapsed. There's bound to be speculation about the state of the other tower. Um, we understand that 50,000 people are employed in the two towers of the World Trade Center. That's 50,000 people. Um, the first plane that hit, hit uh, approximately 20 floors uh, beneath the top of the building. It burned furiously for about an hour, as did the second tower, before collapsing. Uh, the figures of casualties we have at the moment are very low, but bound to be higher eventually, sadly. The guy's skin from my thing here. Oh, Real quick. You were in the, uh, which tower? I was in B tower. A, 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 a tower. What floor were you on? A B1. What floor? First one. What happened? Tell me. When I, a big explosion happened. Some guy came out. His, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah, by the plane? Yeah. About 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. People jumping out. People just kept jumping and jumping and jumping. And you could still see they were alive because they were flailing around. The FBI has already stepped in to investigate. It could be possibly uh, a terrorist strike. It could be. It could be because was the first one went off and then 10 back minutes up, later this up. just blew up out of nowhere. Hard to think that that would just be accidental. Up, no, I don't think it would be accidental. Back it up, folks. Back it up. Kenny? Jehaneman. Spell your name. J-O-H-A-N-N-E-M-A-N-N. -N -E -N -N. And you were working there? As yes, I was right there. I was, in the I was down in the basement, came down, all of a sudden the elevator blew up, smoke. I dragged the guy out, his skin was hanging off, and I dragged him out, and I helped him out of the, out of, to the ambulance. Thank you. Right? Actually, at this stage, um, our business presenter, uh, John Terrich, joins us. Um, John, you were telling us earlier that there are 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Center towers. It's an incredible number, isn't it? Very hard to imagine. 50,000 people employed in the two buildings. As a result of what's happening, and it's very obvious from what you're looking at, why this should be, Wall Street is closed today, the markets there are not trading. And because business hates uncertainty, two things have happened. In London, the FTSE index, our leading index of 100 shares, has fallen through the floor. And at a quarter past three this afternoon, it was 250 points down. A few seconds ago, it was 223 points down. 
the euro has been rising strongly against the dollar and also the price of Brent crude oil trading in London has risen sharply by more than two dollars a and barrel. John of course all sorts of claims and counterclaims of responsibility um, uh, we're seeing further scenes of course of devastation in Manhattan Valerie. Indeed three words I think terror chaos and confusion first reactions there to what's been going on in New York you can see there explosions debris falling out of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. One of them completely collapsed and we had an eyewitness there talking about people literally throwing themselves from the building, throwing themselves out of the window to see if they could save themselves. Horrific, horrifying scenes there. We're getting reaction already from around the world. Uh, Prime Minister Tony Blair here has already cancelled his speech to the TUC and has described the attacks in the United States as the most terrible, shocking event. Now we can go over to Jerusalem and to our correspondent there, Orla Garen. Orla, first reactions in Jerusalem. Well, there's a huge sense of shock here, as I think there is everywhere. People are glued to their television screens, watching with uh, increasing degrees of horror as these terrible events unfold. There's also a feeling of dread here, a great sense of anxiety that perhaps somebody in this region, some faction, some interest group may be involved. Now, we did, as you reported earlier, have an initial claim of responsibility from one Palestinian faction, an organization called the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. The initial claim of responsibility was made in an anonymous telephone call to Abu Dhabi television. We've now had strenuous, uh, energetic and repeated denials from official spokesmen for that organization, both in the West Bank and Gaza. They've been phoning us, uh, pleading that uh, we ensure that people are told that they are not involved in this. I have to say that it hasn't been their type of activity in the past, even in the 1970s when Palestinian factions were involved in airplane hijacks. It was not this group. So uh, they are stressing that they're not involved now. Indeed, our, our political editor, Brian Hannan, was saying that uh, we must expect claims and counterclaims. Uh, a lot of people will want to say that they actually did this. Well, in fact, that is the case. Brian is absolutely right. There will be various factions here rushing forward to try and, as they would see it, claim the credit and uh, capitalise on this moment to put them and their agenda into the spotlight and gain international attention. A lot of people obviously will be looking at this region, though, very carefully. We do have repeated uh, threats made against American interests from groups here. Orla. It's uh, stating the obvious to say that the Palestinians regard the Americans as being pro-Israeli. Indeed, we're getting reports in that a car bomb has gone off outside the U.S. State Department. Looking at the reaction of people in New York, I mean, this is something that we usually see in Israel, isn't it, in Jerusalem. They can actually identify with what is going on, the terror and the panic of not knowing what may happen next. Well, in fact, people here have been commenting rather wryly that uh, for us uh, and, and for those who live here, this is quite a familiar scene. But yes, there is a great deal of shock here. This is still a, a terrorist action on a massive scale, an absolutely enormous scale. People here are used to dealing with car bombs, with suicide attacks, but never with a coordinated a campaign of this kind, with three separate actions taking place against three very major targets. I should tell you that we've been receiving reports in the last few minutes that there are improbable celebrations taking place uh, among some Palestinians on the West Bank. They've been out in the streets firing their guns in the air, uh, happy to celebrate what they would see uh, as an attack on American interests, which is something that uh, many Palestinians would support. But I should say that we really must be cautious at this point. We have not had anything that comes close to a credible statement of responsibility from any known Palestinian group. We'll return to you later, but for the moment, Ola Guerin in Jerusalem, thank you very much indeed. Well, just to update you, uh, we've now got a situation where there are two towers, the World Trade Center towers, both had planes fly into them in apparent terrorist attacks. One of the towers has now collapsed. Uh, of course, there are tens of thousands of people, 50,000 of people wor working in these two towers. The Pentagon has been evacuated in Washington, D.C. Uh, after an apparent third plane uh, landing, crash landing near there. The President of the United States, George Bush, has been cautious so far in what he said. He said it's an apparent terrorist attack on the United States, but uh, our own Prime Minister, Tony Blair, has been uh, much more forthright. He has said he believes that it is clearly a terrorist attack following the uh, hijacking of three separate planes in Boston. Let's 
cross over now and hear what the Prime Minister Tony Blair said a few moments ago.